My name is Danielle Davis and I read, write, and roller skate in Los Angeles. Welcome to this writer's life where we peek into process. This episode is all about conflict. So conflict is what makes stories really interesting, full of drama and suspense and tension to keep the reader interested and in reading. Conflict is defined as a struggle between two opposing forces. But what does that really mean? I like to think about conflict as a problem. A conflict is a problem the main character is having. So you might think about your own life and whether you can think of a problem. It could be something that you're going through right now, something you're struggling with now. It could be something that you've struggled with in the past. And thinking about a problem that you have had, that you struggled with, that might help you in terms of thinking about what that can look like, what a problem or conflict can look like in a story. So why do we like to read about or watch problems or conflicts in stories when we already have them in our own lives? I think that's part of it. By witnessing problems, they're relatable to us. They're something we're familiar with. And not only that, by watching or reading about problems, it's kind of a way for us to practice having problems and practice dealing with those problems. By experiencing them through a character at a distance, we get to practice and think, how would I deal with that problem? Or how might I learn to deal with a problem differently in the future? So by reading stories, we learn about problems and we can apply that to our own lives. There are two kinds of conflicts or problems, external, and internal. And let me tell you what I mean. So in terms of an external problem, that means it's something outside of the character, outside of you, right? It's external. So there are a couple different types of external problems or conflicts. There could be a problem with a person. That could be like the villain of the story. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like a super villain and they're super evil. It could just be someone that the character is struggling with, right? Someone that's putting an obstacle in their way. Maybe they want something that that character doesn't want them to have. And then you have the person as the problem. Another external problem can be with a thing. For example, maybe your character can't open the jar of pickles that they want to open, right? That's having a problem with a thing. Or it could also be a problem with a thing that's kind of like an institution. Like what if they're having a problem with their school and there's a policy at their school that they don't agree with? That's a conflict, right? That's an external problem. And the last kind of external problem is a problem with nature. Let's say you want to go for a walk and it's raining and you can't. That's a problem with something outside of yourself with nature. And in terms of the internal problem that a character might be having, that is usually a feeling or an idea. So maybe the character is having a feeling that's holding them back. Fear is a common one that we see in stories that might hold a character back, but it could be any kind of feeling that they're struggling with. It also could be an idea. That's something internal to themselves. So maybe there's an idea that the character has about themselves that isn't true. Some idea or belief that is holding them back and doesn't need to be. I'm going to give you a few examples of story problems in picture books, my favorite. And this is something you can do as well with any kind of book or story or creation. You can think about, hmm, what is the main story problem? What is the main conflict in that story? Just as kind of practice or as an exercise. For example, in this picture book, Good Night Wiggly Toes, the problem is that the character needs to go to sleep, but they are feeling Wiggly, that's the problem. In Benji the Bad Day and Me, the main character is having a problem because they're having a bad day and their brother is also having a bad day and that's the problem that they're coping with. In Don't Touch My Hair, the conflict or problem is right there in the title, right? The main character's problem is that other people are touching their hair and they don't want them to. That's the problem. Same goes for I don't want to be a frog. The problem is right there in the title. The main character doesn't want to be a frog. In After the Fall, the problem is the main character's fear of heights. So that's an internal problem. That's a feeling that they're having that is an obstacle. 
in the field, there's a moment when there's a problem because the characters all want to play a soccer game and it starts to rain. So now they have a problem, an external problem with nature. And finally, in Saturday is swimming day. This is another internal problem. You can tell just from this character's gesture, I think, that they don't want to go swimming, right? They're having a fear of swimming, and that's the problem that they have in this book. There's one more thing I want to tell you about conflicts or problems, and that is that they often have two parts. It's these two opposing forces, right, that are creating a problem, creating conflict and struggle. And they are the protagonist and the antagonist. The protagonist, you can remember, because it has the word pro in it, so it is the main character usually, and it's who we're rooting for. We're for them in the story. That's the protagonist. And then the antagonist has um, ant in it, which is a little like anti, right? So that is the force or the entity that we are rooting against, the antagonist. So let me give you an example. Let's say I really like eating mangoes for breakfast. So at night, I set out my mango on the counter and I'm going to have it for breakfast in the morning. And then in the morning, I go over there and there are ants all over my mango and I can't eat it. So I'm the protagonist in this story and the ants are the antagonist, right? They're the problem that I'm having. But you could also flip it and you could think about it a different way. You could also think about it from the ant's perspective. And what if the ants are the protagonist and I'm the antagonist and I'm taking away their mango and trying to get rid of them? So it's really all about perspective and whose perspective you're looking through in a story. And that kind of defines the problem, right? A problem for who? I hope this helps you understand conflict and problem, and I hope that you will write a story that has a conflict and a problem in it. One of the things you can do to think of one is remember how you were thinking before about that problem that you've had in your life or that you're having right now? You could, if you feel comfortable, write a story about that. Or from all these examples and examples from your own life and your own observations, you could write a story that has any kind of problem that you can come up with. There's a PDF in the show notes that is a refresher on conflict to help you along if you'd like that. Thank you so much for spending this time with me here on This Writer's Life. I hope that you'll subscribe and join me for future episodes. Parents and educators, please visit my website where you can sign up for my newsletter, and that way you can get new episodes delivered right to your inbox, as well as a corresponding PDF if there is one. mostly working in picture books like uh, Marie Had a Little Llama, which I also wrote, but it's kind of twist on Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then I illustrated a book most recently, Kai and the Bees by Mary Beth Bolts. But the past few years, I've really taken a big plunge or dive into a different type of book, a uh, chapter book. So I've written the Stella Diaz series. The first one of Stella Diaz has something to say. And then the second one is Stella Diaz Never Gives Up. And I just finished the third one, Stella Diaz Dreams Big, which comes out in January of 2021. My biggest pieces of advice are actually two that I love to give to anyone who wants to be a writer. The first one is to pretend you're a detective meaning you are on the case to find out everything about your story. You are trying to figure out as much as you can about your characters, the setting, and everything that goes in between. Like who is your character? Where is your um, story take place as the setting? And then you can get even more specific, like what is the problem in the story? Or with your character, there's so many questions you can ask. Think of them as like a real person, even if they're an imaginary, like fantastical creature. Think about what their favorite color is, what their favorite flavor of ice cream is, um, who is their best friend, what are they really afraid of? 
all of those type of questions really just give you a sense of who your character is and the more that it feels real to you, the more real it will feel in the story. And so just keep asking yourself those questions when you're writing and you'll come up with something really special. And then second, which is super important, whether you want to be a writer or an illustrator, is don't expect to get it perfect on the first try. You know, every author does so many revisions until they get their story perfect. And even then, they might want to go back and change things even when the book is published. So the idea is that you get that first draft down and you just get all your ideas onto paper and then you revise it and that's where the sentences are prettier or they're just working better. Their overall story is getting um, more interesting and uh, detailed as you continue to go along. And the same thing with a drawing, you know, you do a little scribble and then you add more detail and you draw it again, you try it from a different point of view and then all of a sudden you have a drawing that works really well that could eventually become an illustration in a book. So thank you so much for listening. I hope I've inspired you to write something wonderful and to make your own story.